Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Kamru Zama Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Sunday, the 17th of Rabi'ul Akhir 1444, corresponding with the English date 13th of November 2022. This Majlis took place at the residence of Hazrat Wala after the Ishraq Salat. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the ayat of the Quran in Majid. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا Hazrat Wala says the Kalam-e Paak, the tafsir was captured, I picked it up and when I open, I see this ayat is appearing in front of me. I spoke about this in the past, but it deserves to be spoken about over and over again. But the Quran is such that la yan qadi ajaibuhu, the amazing subtle points of the Quran and Majid, the nikat and the ulum and ma'arif will never come to an end. I speak about the ta'aleem of the buzurgan e -deen. However, the asal and the essence is that of the Qur'an. And the ta'aleem of the buzurgan e -deen is always tabi' and should be in conformity of the, uh, uh, with the teachings of the Qur'an e Majid. If not, then it is nothing. We read the Qur'an. We make tilawat. But we also need to understand uh, the Quran and Majid. Rather, I find a great deficiency even amongst the religious regarding understanding the Quran and Majid. Here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wasbir nafsaka, restrain yourself with those who seeking his pleasure call to their Rabb morning and evening. Not alone, not in solitude, but logo ke saat leke chale. Take, sit with the people and take them with, together with you. You know, a person intends journey and suffer. Then what does he do? He gets a few people together and then they go and undertake the journey. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Ahmad Saab used to quote these couplets. Tanha na chal sakenge, muhabbat ki raah mein, me chal raha hu, aap mere saat aayye. I am walking. Tanha na chal sakenge. You would never be able to walk individual. You would never be able to walk alone in the path of love. I am walking. Join me. I am walking. Come with me. It is a very, a very uh, wonderful couplets uh, on the topic of sohbat and companionship. Many people have written on this topic of sohbat, the companionship of the pious. However, these couplets of Maulana are just something else. Unki marzi par hu qurba Janye usko hasil irfa That on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may my life be and on his wishes may my life be sacrificed. Unki marzi par hu kurba. I am ready. I am here. Jan ye usko hasil irfa. Understand it to be the essence of the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yesterday I was saying and we were speaking about Islam and istislam. Islam is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And East Islam is the submission that was presented by Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So East Islam, this will remain forever and forever that we should submit to the deen and the command and the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here yeah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is being commanded to sit 
with the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was commanded, that restrain yourself for those who, seeking his pleasure, call their rub morning and evening. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then went out to look for these people. They were the poor Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, whose hair was disheveled, whose skin was parched, and who only who had only one piece of cloth to clothe themselves with. Upon seeing them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with them and said, all praise be to Allah who has created within my ummah such people with whom I have been commanded to remain with. Allahu Akbar. You know, some many long years ago, I went with my students. We were invited. And we sat and we waited. The students also sat and they waited. And some lot of people entered and they were fed. And the students looked and they waited. And another lot of people came in and they were fed. The students looked at them and they waited. And then I could not tolerate. So I stood up. And then I said that you give preference to others over these poor students. Nevertheless, he really asked for mafi. But the same thing that is mentioned here in this ayat, what was the description of the Sahaba here? Those whose hair was disheveled, whose skin was parched, and they only had one piece of cloth to clothe themselves. These were poor students. You know, a person will have color in his cheeks and it will be protruding. Uh, because he has something to eat. You know, one occasion, Hazrat Wala is saying that a judge of high caliber and of note came. Nevertheless, he sat for a while. He looked at the students. And then what was his remark? And what did he have to say? I've never seen such illuminated faces and faces of Noor ever before. Nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us like that, that our faces and our, uh, we be illuminated. You know, in Kantaria, we go there for the Ayatikaf. Now, you know, the students, it's on the main road, the wall of the masjid and the whole compound. And the students normally walk there. There was this engineer who came from uh, Bhopal. Nevertheless, eventually he started attending the majlis and he would sit right there in front. And he went on to say that he was so affected by this year and he told his non-Muslim associates, the engineers, those who were with him, that you may be earning 40 or 50,000 uh, rupees a month. Now that is back in the day when this incident took place. But... You do not have that type of peace and tranquility which is in the hearts of these students. Look at them. Nobody attaches importance to them. But look at the noor in their faces and look at how much of noor and peace they have in their hearts. Now this is the noor that the mu'min he sees, yanduru bi nurillah. He sees what the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, yeah, wasbir nafsaka, restrain, sabr. Sabr is carried out when a person has to undergo difficulties. That's why restrain yourself with those, even though it may be difficult for you. So normally, the leaders of nations look down upon poor, pious people, not realizing that the wealth and position that intoxicate them will soon disappear, whereas Iman and good deeds last forever. It is extremely foolish to look down on those who are busy acquiring the things that are everlasting. The things that are everlasting. Hazrat Mawlana Fazlur Rahman 
Ganj Muradabadi, Hazrat Shah Wasiullah used to also say this. Now this is the ta'aleem of the Qur'an. Can there be anything that is greater than this? Allahu Akbar. A person was going on one occasion and Hazrat Mawlana Shah Fadul Rahman said to him that, uh, no, don't go. Stay for a bit because I am going to start the Abu Dawood Sharif. Now, he was a ajeeb wa gharib shakhsiyat. Durveshana libas me shahi mizaj. Very simple. However, his nature was that of uh, empress and kings. His mizaj was like that. Shahi. Ek martaba. Someone came and they said that a certain, certain nawab and a minister or influential person, whoever it may could have been, uh, saying that if Maulana comes, then I will hand over a hundred thousand uh, rupees. Now, a hundred thousand rupees in that time was a lot of money. It was a huge sum. Nevertheless, Maulana even forgot about that. He started doing his work. And then after a while, the person said again that uh, this person is saying that if Maulana comes, a hundred thousand rupees uh, would be given. So Maulana then said that what I am saying you are, not, you are not listening to. And when I get involved in my ta'aleem and in my asbaq and seeing to this and seeing to that, when I'm in this type of thing, then I remember nothing whatsoever. Allahu Akbar. Now, Hazrat Mawlana Fazl Rahman Sab, two wives, and on one occasion he went to uh, Lucknow. And then the message was sent that uh, if something could be sent, because there was nothing at that time. And then he, he thought for a moment that I sent this and I sent that and I sent that. Is everything uh, finished already? And he stopped for a moment that I had hundreds of thousands of rupees which I just distributed now. I don't have anything whatsoever with me. Now tell me, أُولَٰئِكَ آبَائِي فَجِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِمْ إِذَا جَمَعْتَنَا يَا جَرِيرُ الْمَجَامِعُ That these are my forefathers. If you can, bring someone the like of these. O oh, Jarir. He was a person who possessed great uh, spiritual states and hal. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, he used to emphasize so much on ikhlas and he used to make the people stand. Rather, he used to tell them to go out. Sometimes even on the mistake of one, he would scold all. Rather, he would chase them out. On one occasion, this is exactly what had happened. That on the mistake of one, he asked all to leave. Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith was present there and he said, Hazrat, but the mistake is because of one and you asked all to leave. And then Hazrat Barjasta immediately quote the couplets, it goes something like this Tu as kome bedan shikan na tera manzilat bashit na mera. When one from the group uh, does something foolish, then neither does your rank remain nor mine. Everyone is taken to task for that. Now, on the answer, spontaneous answer, Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, personality like that, absolute silence, chup, khamosh. And then, I mean, Hazrat, uh, tell me, is this not a dalil? that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the masjid and then in the masjid he finds balgam and phlegm on the wall of the masjid due to which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes enraged that his blessed face becomes red and then his anger at that time was not on that one but regarding all 
regarding all his the, the, the anger there was for every person that was present there that okay fine that person done that that's bad enough and then after that all of you here how does it still stay on the wall nobody could even take it and remove it So wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladhina yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal 'ashi yuriduna wajha The people who did not accept Islam fully during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu uh, there were also people there were people who do not did not accept Islam fully during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to give them things to maintain their iman they were called the mu'allafatul qulub Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to accede to their request but revealed the verses what were the verses that what do ma uhiya ilayka min kitab rabbik recite what has been revealed to you from the book of your rabb la mubaddila li kalimati there is none who can alter his words walan tajid min dunihi multahada and you will certainly not find another place of refuge besides with him So here, yeah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather commanded that restrain yourself with those who seeking his pleasure call out to their Rabb morning and evening. Now today, we are sitting with such people or people sit with such people. People, people, sit, people sit with such people and read such kitabs that takes them and makes them reach irtidad and apostasy you know hazrat manana shah wasiullah sahab used to quote this incident to us so often and so abundantly he would say that a person came to visit his friend he came and he sat down it was the time of iftari the friend said come sit break your rosa nevertheless he was reluctant and he sat back but the friend immediately collected and worked out and he understood from this person his hesitation his body language his face etc that what had actually happened so he said okay at least eat the food at least eat the food it seems that you have left the fold of islam at least eat the food now we're having a meal but do me a favor first thing tomorrow morning go and visit the sheikh Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ganj Muradabadi. Nevertheless, the next morning, this person does exactly that. And when he comes there and he reaches, Hazrat Manana Shah Abdul Rahman, he was on he, in his stoop there and he jumps that wall of the veranda, the half wall, and he comes running to him. Without this person even saying a word, he takes his palm, the palm of his hand, and he strikes it on the chest of this person once, twice, a third time. And then he goes on to say to him, tell, tell me, do you still have any doubts of Islam? Do you still have any doubts of Islam? Allahu Akbar. But what does this person himself say? He relates and he says, It felt like at that time my entire Iman, my Islam, ev everything returned to me, and whatever doubts I had was expelled from my head, my mind, my body, my heart. Now Allah Ta'ala also create such type of effects within us, not for the dunya, but for that Allah. To whom we are going to return to Ilahi Maksude Man Tu He Warizai Tu Mohabbat O Maarifate Khudbide Oh Allah, my Maksud, my goal and my objective is you and your pleasure. Therefore, Mohabbat O Maarifate Khudbide, bless me with your love 
and your recognition. Now the Mashaikh in Najbandiya, this is the Khas Wazifa. And the father of Hazrat Shah Waliullah used to say that whatever I achieved was because of the barkat of this dua. Hazrat Khaja Muhammad Masum, he used to say that I can't understand how the hearts of those people are alive in which there is no love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no love of Allah in that heart. How is that heart ever or how can it ever be alive? So should we not understand, verify, accept and believe in this teachings? Inkar Navashi. Inkar Navashi. Don't object. Don't reject. So Ilm e Mukashafa. This knowledge, what we're speaking about, hasil karo, achieve it, work for it, work towards it. And if not, at least acknowledge that there is something like this. And there are people who enjoy this type of wealth. And if not, I fear on you an evil end. Allahu Akbar. Now here, we also learn from this ayat that for sohbat, there is certain conditions and prerequisites. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ And do not shift your attention from them with the intention of acquiring adornment of this worldly uh, life. And Wala Tutuman Awfalna Kalbahu and the Krina Wattaba Ahawahu Wakana Amruhu Furuta do not obey him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance. So set in the Sahbat of who those who call their Rabb morning and evening. You know, that's why Okay. So it can't be and should, should not be like this that the talib e khuda the one who, who uh, serves, who, who, who is searching, uh, treading the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he comes there, he's got thirst, he's searching for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're negligent of him. Now how well it is written. Tell me, can the Buzrugan Deen even present something like this? This is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazamarana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to quote so much that a better one came. Uh, no, he, he used to quote, I mean, I, I heard this from him. I seen it. I was there. Rather, I was sent to rectify the situation that someone came and he done something unbecoming. So Nabi Hazrat Shah Wasiullah Sahib then asks another person or tells him that listen go and tell him, go and make him understand. This person takes him outside and then what does he do? He starts scolding and reprimanding him. Then Hazrat Wala then looks at me and tells me go and tell him did I ask him to explain to the person or to sit there shout and reprimand the person? What was it? It was this, that this person is a talib e khuda. He should be appreciated. He should be treasured. He should be treated in a most beautiful form and manner. So here also we learn, Bil Ghadati Wal Ashiyi, the quality that Nabi Sallallahu was commanded to sit with those who, seeking the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala, they are sitting morning and evening. Ghadati wal ashi. You know, that's why till today I have got so much of ihtimam of sitting for that little while in the morning and in the evening. Don't you see? I never or rarely do, would you find me missing out this time here from Fajr to Ishraq. It is after that that I just rest for a while. Now, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah, at that time when I became sick, and he said that, listen, if not tahajjud, but most definitely make this incumbent upon you after Fajr, right till Ishraq, you do that what you would have been doing at the time of tahajjud. Not only that, and then he would come and make nigrani. He would come and see, am I doing that or am I not doing that? 
You know, I'll tell you, we're speaking about this dunya. There was this person, we were in Bombay, and he came and he told Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib that, Hazrat, last night, this place here was so well lit, and there were so many tents, and hundreds and thousands, uh, uh, I mean, uh, hundreds of people that were there. But today, now in the morning, when we pass this very place, there's nothing. The tables are gone, the chairs are gone, the tents are taken away, and you find nothing but dogs eating off the leftovers what people could have thrown there. Now this is the reality of this dunya. That just a couple of hours ago, there was so much of adornment. And now when you come past the same place and you look at it, it's a barren field with dogs there. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the masjid and a Bedouin arrived due to which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa started moving and dragging himself trying to make place for this person. This person goes on to say, Oh Nabi of Allah, remain where you are. There is so much a place in the masjid. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said to him that tell me, should I not make that amount of uh, harkat for the arrival of a believer? Allahu Akbar. Today, people come, they arrive, but we, we would not stand up. We would not make space for them. There is no tawazu. There is no humility that someone has come, shift a bit, even a little bit, just to show importance to the arrival of a mu'min. Has Allah not spoke about this? Tafassahu fil majalis. Okay, now let's deep that. Otherwise, we will start going on to that topic. So Allah Ta'ala did not allow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to accede to their request but revealed that verses. Okay, we went through that already. So here, then the next ayat, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Speak, say, the truth comes from your Rabb. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ Whomsoever is, whomsoever is willing should uh, believe. And whomsoever is unwilling should remain as a disbeliever. وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا We have surely prepared for the oppressors a fire, the walls of which will encompass them. وَإِيَسْتَغِيثُ And if they beseech help, they will be helped with water that is like the residue of burnt oil and will scorch their faces. Allahu Akbar. Bi'sa sharab. A terrible drink indeed. Wasa'at murtafaqa. Jahannam is the worst of resting places. Allahu Akbar. Now this is Quran. Allah Ta'ala let us become mutta'iz. Let us take admonition from these ayat of the Quran and Majid. In it, Allah give us the tawfiq, is the knowledge, all the knowledge of the awwaleen wal akhirin. Everything is mentioned in this last, final, heavenly and divine scripture, Al-Quran. Now let us make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat in the true sense to walk this path to Him. Allah ta'ala Give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making amal on this talimat of the buzurgan e deen which in essence is the essence of the Quran. It is in essence the teachings of the Quran and the hadith. Allah Ta'ala bless us with his muhabbat, with his ma'rifat, with his love, his recognition, with his qurb, proximity and qubul acceptance. Allah Ta'ala let us live our lives in, according to, in accordance to the Sunnah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sameeul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawwabur rahim. Bi hurmati Sayyidin Nabiyyil Kareem. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.